Hey there, welcome to the startup process. I have a quick question. What is one brand that comes to your mind when you think about luxury? Making it more specific, what brand is it narrowing down to only fashion brands as options? You probably thought of Louis Vuitton. Ah yeah, Louis Vuitton, the luxury French fashion designer brand that makes everything from perfumes to wallets, from diamond embedded handbags to exotic crocodile skin boots, Louis Vuitton has it all. It is as if the company is a physical spot of fashion and luxury. But from where it is now, how did the journey go? What makes Louis Vuitton Louis Vuitton? Let's do some digging. You might find it fascinating that the company actually took off from trunks. Yep, the founder Louis Vuitton himself was 16 years old when he decided that he wanted to design and manufacture trunks. The company itself might be anything but poor, but when young Vuitton had come to Paris back in 1837, he was not doing so well for himself. In fact, he went to the city on foot, but he brought with him a vision. He was orphaned at just the tender age of 13, and before he actually made it to Paris, he had to make do in various locations by doing small-time jobs and working part-time to ensure his personal sustenance. Just before he could work towards making his name known worldwide, he worked as an apprentice for 17 years at Paris's famous box maker, Monsieur Maréchal. It was there that he gradually learned fine craftsmanship that allowed him to manufacture the best trunks the world was yet to see. You see, the innovation he brought about at the time really would not attract much attention now as it did back then, but that in-the-moment and time-relevant innovation is exactly what defines Louis Vuitton. Back then, public transport was not as comfortable as it is today and people often had problems with their luggage. They needed formidable and yet eye-catching trunks to keep their valuables safe. After 17 years of struggle, Louis Vuitton opened a workshop of his own where the brand became independent and Louis started to craft and sell his renowned trunks, which were famous for being airtight, strong, and yet lightweight. His design was not just good to look at, it had an innovative purpose to it as well. Louis Vuitton trunks were flat on the top, which made them easier to stack and hence made them more practical. This was a simple yet genius idea that really kickstarted the brand's popularity. This fine balance between tradition and innovation is literally something that the brand practices in designing its products even today. However, there is something else behind the brand too. Its marketing strategy and product positioning. This goes back to the trunks too owing to whose popularity Louis Vuitton caught the eyes of Emperor Napoleon's wife, Empress Eugénie de Montijo. She had requested for Louis Vuitton to become her personal luggage maker. From that moment onwards, Louis Vuitton products became synonymous with wealth and status. Maintaining this perception became a key strategy for Louis Vuitton that lives on in the company's business outlook even today. The company has explicitly targeted a very specific segment and has time and again dominated its footing into the market, targeting specifically those interested in luxury items. The first deliberate employment of this was at an exhibition in Paris in 1876 when Louis Vuitton's luggage had caught the attention of a curious Japanese field marshal who ordered a set after being amazed by the quality and design. Why is this particular incident relevant? Two things. First, the brand transcended beyond French borders and the fact that a high-ranking official was the first among the Japanese community to see the worth in the bag meant that it was gaining an international reputation for exclusivity. And second, the emphasis on why he purchased the luggage is quality. It is the same claim of unmatched quality that Louis Vuitton fiercely markets today. The leadership of the company has also remained an important aspect of ensuring its success. George, Louis Vuitton's son, continued the brand's journey to becoming a globally recognized name. 
One of his major moves towards expansion was to have the brand appear in Chicago's 1893 World Fair. This took the already famous Louis Vuitton luggage all the way across the world, showing off the brand's status as a preference of the French, British, and Japanese elite. By the beginning of the 20th century, Louis Vuitton had already become the world's largest luggage maker, with shops opening all across the world's major cities, including Bombay, New York, Alexandria, and Buenos Aires. This sudden global expansion is something that the company prides itself on today, and its timely execution has ensured that the brand became a name in certain parts of the world even before the local industries were formalized. To remain on top, though, growth should never come to a halt, and Louis Vuitton has never erred for a second. The growth strategy saw the company's product line gradually increase alongside its global outreach to include purses, bags, wallets, and jackets. Basically, almost everything you can make of leather is a part of Louis Vuitton's large catalog of products. The company did some careful market placement in the 19th century to help its products penetrate the richer segment of the globe's population. Pricing was important and helped make sure that the company was always out of reach for some, making it more desirable yet less achievable. This virtually increased demand whilst supply was kept limited. Thanks to this, the famous LV monogram is one of the most recognizable fashions across the world. The company's leadership also made a brilliant decision to form a merger with fellow fashion house Moet Hennessy to form Moet Hennessy Louis Vuitton, or LVMH, back in 1987. This tactical merger allowed LVMH to reshape the fashion industry to form a monopolistic competition market. This was done by purchasing other leading fashion and luxury brands after consolidating the merger. The brands purchased include Sephora, Veuve Clicquot, Christian Dior, Fendi, and Bulgari. When you control the competition, you control who wins and, to ensure that they win, Louis Vuitton continues to keep its identity unique and distinct by keeping a separated and independent organizational structure. This allows it to keep its heritage unique. Speaking of heritage, Louis Vuitton also differentiates itself by living up to its founding values and ensuring that there is plenty of this heritage associated with its products whilst marketing them. So essentially, when you buy a Louis Vuitton bag, you're not just buying a product, but something of meaningful history. This is something that enriches the customer's experience by giving them an idea of exclusivity. The brand is also known to show no compromise in the quality and a large number of its high-end products continue to be made by hand. This also allows Louis Vuitton to perpetuate an image of itself as being the absolute symbol of quality. Cleverly enough, exotic types of leather like the aforementioned crocodile skin as well as furs and snake skin are a feature of some of the company's most exclusive products. All of this is crucial to the company's image and allows them to charge high prices for each of their products. The high price itself, in fact, is a point of value for customers. Quite often, Louis Vuitton products are too expensive, and that is exactly what makes their exclusive nature so attractive to customers. Thanks to these business and marketing strategies, Owning or frequenting Louis Vuitton's apparel and accessories is effectively a status symbol for most people. The Louis Vuitton brand name itself was estimated to be worth well over $47 billion in 2020, whilst sales for the year were over an astounding $15 billion. Although it has countless products and even has a state-of-the-art fragrance factory to manufacture perfumes, the company continues to make trunks too, and by now, you should know why. So with all that you've been told, bear in mind that there is heritage, reliability, exclusivity, and history behind the LV monogram the next time you go shopping for those cool handbags that celebrities love. Well, that is it for Louis Vuitton. It's honestly fascinating to see where the brand is now compared to how humble its founder and origins were. I hope you liked the video. 
leave a thumbs up and let us know if we missed anything in the comments section. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell icon. Until next time.